Hi, yi yi. How are we going to stream? What a mad night this has been. I'm trying to get a stream going. Hi, worn out. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Grandma, goalie, Toxy, Kate. Hi, Kate. Get the Fukushima hounds. You'll find a link down below, everybody. Sergeant, Brian, Mervyn, Lady of the U. Yeah, I guess so, lady. Uh, Lori, Candace, Solar Mechanic, Fluctus, Cats Alive, Real Night Writer. Make is looking. I'm not sure how long I'm going to last tonight. Uh, it's been a hectic kind of a day trying to get this accomplished. I'm not, uh, I'm not the techie I want to be. <laughs> Yeah, well tonight you were supposed to get uh, video in the stream, you're supposed to get pictures in the stream, you're supposed to have a green screen behind me, I can't even find that in the program. But I spent all day working on a program to surprise you folks tonight, and I had music, I got everything imported into it, and I can't connect to YouTube, so I'll have to wait till tomorrow or the next day. I don't know if I got time to do it tomorrow. Hi, Nubaru Magic is here, folks. Uh, find his link below if you're watching this later on. He's alongside of us. Uh, it's live stream, 7 or 8 Pacific, Canada, uh, British Columbia time, most nights. And there's a good conversation going on alongside of us. Hi, Ping, Miss Frill, Gary. I'm just saying hi to everybody now in the conversation. I can't keep up with it. My head feels like it's going to burn off my shoulders here so I don't know I'm kind of out of piss and vinegar already I haven't even started just gotta get just gotta go look at uh, Ken Busler uh, Busler from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution to fire me to fuck back up again I guess Ugh. and we got a good uh, we got a lower bit rate because I was trying to set up the other software and so I can have pictures and pictures and pictures and lower fifths and I can have uh, a couple of pictures and me and video. So I got it all working. Everything is working perfectly. It's unbelievably cool. It's fantastic. And it's got uh, virtual sound that I haven't figured that one out. Or the green screen. So I should have a green screen behind me really soon. I got all the software today. Everything... I've been at this since 10 o'clock this morning, non-stop. And it's 7 o'clock. And 15 minutes ago, I said, okay, well, I'll go back to Adobe. <laughs> er. And so I've been uh, just trying to come on time again, which I'm pretty good at. I had a one up today, and it's the wrong format. So I took it down, and in the hopes that I can get this one to work. And this one didn't work either. And we got the earthquake last night. Yeah, I did so. Grandma Goldie. And uh, the earthquake, uh, this place rocked. I mean, it rocked. The door was swinging and everything. Nothing fell, but uh, it actually made me dizzy for about a minute. It didn't stop here for a whole minute. This place just rocked. Unbelievable. And a friend of mine called me and said, Earthquake! <laughs> a few miles down the road. And so I went up to her place and um, she called her mom and asked her. And she said, yeah, they felt it there. And it turned out we had a big earthquake. We found it a few minutes later. It was already online. Yeah, me too, Candace. Hi, Daz Booger and Mugget. Uh, Ken Abusler, that's right, uh, Knight Rider. The abuseler with an A. That would a B. Starlight. Thank you, Lunar. Sending energy. 6.6. .6. Yeah, we get different numbers. X Flare. Stuff like that. MSVS. The whole what is time question. I don't know, Nuber Magic. I'm kinda I just jumped straight into this. It's pretty frustrating. I had all that all that prep work done, I had made lower resolution video so they wouldn't stutter in the video player. The audio is going to be really good. It's going to be fantastic. Totally going to change the game. 
and I got such a big uh, library that I'm importing everything in there but I got to get online and uh, we'll just move on right now but yeah I heard harp last night Sean um, harp doesn't mean that much to me outside of the point that it's a weapon being used on the planet uh, it's been around for a long time it's verified they changed the atmosphere they pushed the um, put the upper layer boundaries of the Earth's atmosphere 50-60 kilometers in the space with directed energy and then release it but they're using a radio wave and um, yeah there's a lot going on there I mean it's it's significant don't get me wrong I'm not saying it's not significant I'm just saying it's a it's it's very destructive what it can do you can control weather you're talking about something and we switched conversations here tonight, but you're talking about something that is pushing your upper atmosphere up into space 50 or 60 miles and then releasing it as a weapon. And not only uh, Americans are doing that, of course, with the harp, but China's doing it and Russia's doing it and Canada's doing it with the Americans. But the Americans got a whole bunch of these installations, and so everybody's freaking around with this shit. And it's real, it's tangible. Uh, Nicholas, Nikola Tesla, you know, the, the, the very father of the, the system we use now in electricity, the alternating currents. And uh, hi, uh, Eileen, you, sir. Hello, sir, I never got your name. My name's Dana Durnford, D-U-R-N-F-O-R-D. And you will find me live five, six, seven nights a week. Hi, Diver Dude. I Ionosphere, thank you. Yeah, I'm starting to come around a bit now. And so let me jump. Let me jump right now. Because otherwise I'll get stalled out on what I'm not singing, right? And, you know, it's time for to stop Japan before we lose this friggin' planet. I don't need no computer in front of me, um, but I will. I'm just saying we need we need to stop Japan. You can't keep hemorrhaging into the ocean like St. Paddy's Day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, 1,440 minutes a day, a thousand pounds. Think about a thousand pounds a die going into a river for St. Paddy's Day and the river turns bright. Imagine that every minute. 1440 minutes a day they never stop there's a truck every minute 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 every minute there's a truck for 1140 days or so say over 1100 days straight 1440 minutes a day hemorrhaging into the ocean but it's invisible and you can't see it or smell it or feel it or taste it or hear it or paint pictures of it so to speak De debatable because your mind can paint pictures but if it was like St. Paddy's Day where you could actually see it right where it had a color we wouldn't have this debate obviously right now we wouldn't have these conversations because everybody would be able to put the pressure on the system and the system would get it but the system doesn't uh, allow you to, to understand what I'm saying to you and, and so if you're hearing this you're lucky because I'm telling you the truth and uh, it's well vetted and it could easily be 600 to a thousand tons a day of highly radioactive materials water ran over um, fission products the cores rods parts of the rods the neutrons the x-rays the hot rods rods were uh, exploded out into the ocean as the tsunami was still coming back out these places detonated uh, there was three melted reactors at Fukushima. This is very grave. This is very serious. This is not a joke. I'm not uh, here because I want to be. I'm here because i got no choice. And in that sense, I want to be. Because I want to make sure that you get a real narrative so you can make up your own mind. So you actually have a different narrative than the, the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution indoctrination machine, which is where you're going to get everywhere you go where uh, Fukushima radiation they say well there's no way you can get over here but I'll tell you the EPA has 
now include a cesium-137, a man-made radioactive ionized particles and isotopes as a standard in your drinking water at 7400 becquerels a cubic meter. You, um, you, this is cumulative. This is cumulative and so you keep, uh, you can't get rid of it. It sequesters in your body and your body attacks it and causes tumors. And because you're eating GMO, um, it's really hard for you to uh, fight off these tumors and these autoimmune deficiencies. And so you have to learn to stop eating GMOs. And uh, almost 100% of your corner shops are GMO, if not 100%. And at least 80% are better, if not all of it, is certainly contaminated in your grocery shops with a man-made creature that poses it f as food. And it's a war crime, and it's crimes against humanity, and crimes against the planet th that GMO even exists. It's an outrageous crime. They, what they done was they took food, and the basis of the what we eat in our foods, and they engineered all the potassium. They left little tiny parts per million. And they engineered almost all of the magnesium and the calcium. You know, the reason you're eating the food out of it and they replaced it very into the very DNA of it with uh, dioxins and toxins and there was five in particular but two in particular the glossophates and the formaldehydes stop you from uptaking nutrients and you can't fight off these autoimmune deficiency and cancers that are uh, you can't avoid it because there was such a big release from Fukushima not counting everywhere else I don't really, you know, I care about everywhere else. I include everywhere else. I talk about everywhere else. But tonight I just want you to think about there's three melter reactors that have never, we've never seen anything like that on our planet. Let, not one full 100% meltdown that we know about. And I cover a lot of that. Um, and so this is right on the ocean. And these reactors detonated and there was a fourth one that detonated and all together uh, in uh, Japan there was 14 reactors at least minimum and up to 17 18 reactors that were you know uh, couldn't go into a cold shutdown because of the tsunami and the earthquake and a number of these reactors outside of Fukushima uh, the Yachi military industrial complexes directed energy weapons isotope production facilities because that's what they use nuclear power is all about making isotopes for directed energy weapons got nothing to do with power power is a byproduct of nuclear f uh, fusion or fission and you know nuclear power plants is that's a that's a misnomer it's not a power plant that's what he told you but it's all about making uh, radioactive isotopes and you know Years ago, they were using just regular, uh, if you want to call it regular, nuclear fuel to make energy and everything was fine. And now they make 3,100 isotopes. And none of these makes uh, making electricity any better. All of these, in fact, you have to, it's a way more risky to produce. And you're not producing them, you know, so you can make electricity. You're not producing, they shouldn't be on the planet anyway because they don't even exist, these particular elements. These are man-made elements, so isotopes. And they don't exist on our planet. They're not supposed to be on our planet. They don't exist on the moon. The, the sun doesn't make these types. Well, we're not making elements. We're destroying elements. The sun creates elements. <coughs> Ooh. And so what we're doing it goes against the very laws of nature Period. It shouldn't be happening. As a society, if we were smart enough to do it, we should have been smart enough to know that that is wrong beyond imagination. And that there is no life on this planet that can deal with ionized man-made radiation. There's, there is no life on here. Not even a cockroach, even though he, he fears much better. And some creatures will do better in a radioactive environment, man-made radioactive environment, so they claim. You can't believe anything comes out of their mouth. All uh, the nuclear professionals are hid away in uh, dark corners for quite a few years and we're stuck with Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and a few of the other head bangers for the industry, the bootlickers, 
to cheerleading lap dogs, to cuckoos, to crazies, who uh, always equate uh, potassium-40 products with man-made radioactive isotopes, and they're completely different. So a banana, if you ate a banana and that insignificant, and I have to apologize all the time, of potassium-40 that's in it, you would off-gas that because your body can't hold any more potassium-40. But if that banana had a uh, emitter, just even a becquel a second of cesium or strontium or anything else, then you would ingest that. That would sequester into your body, into your organs, into your blood, into your bones, into your brain. And uh, your body would attack it and create tumors, cancer tumors. And your body will attack it nonstop because it's putting out energy nonstop. And so you'll be weak, more lethargic. You'll have uh, problems concentrating. You'll be tired. And if you, uh, and you most likely did, right through North America, it was a massive radioactive fallout from the tree. Melted, exploded, detonated, hydrogen uh, explosions. One, uh, number three, was MOX fuel. It had a nuclear detonation, not an, ex or not an explosion per se. Like, you know, a nuclear bomb goes off, but very similar. In fact, uh, the shockwave was felt 25 kilometers away by Associate Press reporter who reported on it. it. You know, it's an amazing explosion, right? That was because of a criticality. And now number four at Fukushima, uh, was these are all 10-story buildings. Number three is missing. Number one, it blew his top. Number two still has his top, but it's 100% meltdown. And the pools are destroyed, and they have melted and lost their zirconian uh, claddings, which are very toxic, carcinogenic. And this was all aerosoled and released. And people say, you know, Dana, you don't have to worry about it. It's 5,000 miles away. Well, the jet streams at 100 miles an hour in 24 hours is 2,400 miles. And so it's, um, it's reprehensible that anybody you know, of caliber would say that that's not an issue when it's common knowledge that the Asian Pacific pollution studies and academics and peer review journals show that automobile pollutions, great big particles, make their way across the Pacific in a few days when the weather is right, when they get blown out of the cities and they contribute to American pollution. And so it was, it's not a far stretch to start looking and seeing what how particles one one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter is much tardier and so and by proxy is much more easier to come across the ocean. And we have a, a big record of that in North America. In Canada we've seen uh, the reports from Health Canada of iodine at one thirty iodine one thirty one. Now at three hundred times a background level, now a background level that they talk about is actually potassium 40 and around 7,500 becquels. And so that's 2.5 million becquels, 300 times background. But see, there is no normal background level for a man made radioactive isotopes. It's an addition, it's something new that didn't exist before that has been added in. And it's not, there shouldn't be a single becquel added onto it. If there is, it's completely unacceptable. And the apologist, the nuclear apologist in particular, will always try to marginalize this because they got a pension depends upon it and their future and everything else. And all the lies they told to their families and their loved ones and their friends and the uh, interviews they gave and uh, students and everything else that they've lied to all their life is coming back to roost, is coming back to hunt them. And so. They're not going to give it up very easy. And we got an issue. We can't, our planet cannot sustain what is happening to us. It can't sustain what happened to us. Uh, the, the litany in the history of uh, radioactive man made ionized materials is mind boggling. It's atrocious. It's shocking. It's embarrassing. You know, if there is. <laughs> intelligent life in space, it's, it's fucking gone the other way. Our DNA is not even DNA anymore. 
because we have been up uh, inundated with so much toxins in our lifetime. Not to mention the GMO. It's so bad. You have to find organic. You have to learn, and which is bizarre because everything used to be organic when I was growing up. There was none of this, and now it's hell on earth. I've never, not even my wildest dreams, not even in the craziest cartoon book when I was growing up, was a society like this projected where we were so stupid, we boxed ourselves in with this nuclear nightmare that we can't shut off. We can't shut the fucking stuff off. And this is a, a frightening reality that we better get our acts together. We better put it in gear. We haven't got time to play games anymore. This is definitely too much. It's hemorrhaging every day like St. Paddy's Day. You have to think of it that way. What's going to fucking happen? If the mile, if a river was four or 5,000 miles long and you filled it up all day every day with dying, never stopped for three and a half years, what the frig do you think is going to happen when you do that with radioactive material to an ocean? The radioactive material that's coming out will go right around the ocean and right back to Japan. It won't lose its energy. It's not salutable. They like to pick and choose and manipulate you and deceive you and that's what they're good at for 70 years telling you about bananas telling you about drinking water radiation is everywhere when that has nothing to do with man-made radioactive materials wasn't everywhere it was only because they would lie and continue to lie about every aspect of it that the bottom hasn't fell out of it yet it's an abomination upon our planet. It's 100% of the misery on our planet. Once again, you know, there's 7,500 communities evacuated in Russia, 9,000 square miles because of a nuclear accident. That's, but it keeps getting wider every year. And that has happened all over our planet. You know, Sellafield, England is hemorrhaging into our ocean, to the Atlantic Ocean, at 8 million liters a day from a MOX production facility in Sellafield. We have uh, 2.5 million rounds of uranium-238 in Iraq for nine years. Dirty bombs. 2.5 million a month. 5 million rounds a month to get 11,000 Taliban. Does that, you know, even just at one month, does that sound logical? 2.5 million rounds, or 5 million rounds, half of them are uranium-238 that are supposed to be in a sarcophagus till the end of time, that if you took one of those bullets, or the so-called terrorists took one of those bullets and went into your city, that's, that's what they call a dirty bomb. That's worse than a dirty bomb because it's uranium-238. And it's ionized. It went through the chain reaction. And this planet cannot sustain this stuff. This stuff is annihilistic. It's destroying the very foundation of life on this planet. And we can't hide away from this. We can't just close our eyes and pretend that nothing is going to, everything is going to work out good. You can pray for 5,000 years for somebody else to fix that problem, and it's never going to happen. It'll be too late. It's too late now for most aspects. It's definitely too late to try to save the Pacific Ocean. How can you ever save something with so much radiation released into it? And that's going to hemorrhage out and has hemorrhaged out into other oceans and is because the oceans are connected. But there is natural, you know, what I call a natural barrier that slows down. But it, it will reach every nook and cranny of this friggin' planet and it ain't stopping. Nobody's trying to stop it. We have the homeless working there. In Chernobyl was one-third the size of any of the melted reactors at Fukushima. One-third the size. It was a 30% meltdown. Fukushima is three 100% meltdowns. And they're out there lying in the media saying Chernobyl is the worst accident. One-third the size, a 30% meltdown versus three 100% meltdowns and a detonation in a spent fuel pool at building four of the most toxic stuff on this planet. I mean, we, we've had our shares of uh, 
of of problems on this planet, but we don't even there there is no precedence for what we have done. There's no little black book saying, "Oh, okay, we got this much radioactive material." It's a, it's something that never stops uh, destroying life on Earth because no life on Earth, no no life on Earth is acclimated to man-made radiation and will never be. It took us billions of years to be genetically superiorly selected species to exist perfectly in harmony with all the radon gas on this planet, with all the potassium-40 on this planet, with, you know, with the environment of the planet itself. We are conditioned, right? Radon is not a problem to us. We are acclimated to that, same as we are to the potassium-40. It's irrelevant, but it's used It's used to uh, deceive people and to you know acclimate them into the nuclear industry's uh, lies, constant lies. I mean, why can't they tell us the truth that a banana truly has nothing to do with radioactive fallout or radioactive waste? Look at Whip. Whip had... A truck fire and couldn't go back down in the mine for nine days. This huge, massive, inconceivably big mine. Unimaginably big. And because they had a little truck fire down there, they can never go back in there again. And then nine days later, no one has ever went down to that mine. Then they have a radiation release, they say. Right out of the blue. Well, how would they know? No one's been down since the truck fire. Well, there was no truck fire. There was a radiation release, see? And they had to lie to you, and then that meant your children didn't stay indoors during the dangerous period when the heavy stuff come through. They never even told you when that happened. It only came out later, several days later, that there was an incident there. And then they come out and said, oh, it was just a truck fire, but never bother explaining why they couldn't go back down in the great, big, huge, massive mind, anywhere in that mind, not even into the buildings, on the surface attached to the mines because of a truck fire? No, obviously not. It was because of a radioactive nightmare. And what did they expect when you put all your radioactive material in a hole in the ground and you have an incident? You're fucked. You can't get back in there. Um, the flu and stuffed up and everything here. Tonight. But once again, it's not the stream that I wanted to do tonight. It's just a short stream. I'm giving it up almost pronto here right now. Crash and burn. I'll get up tomorrow and you'll see some tests show up. And I'll be trying to log on and get on. And, you know, do a little short stream tomorrow sometime. And get the kinks out of it so I can do a proper one from here on out. Uh, this is great, you know. It's unbelievable cool. I got everything done but I can't get it to, to sync up with uh, YouTube and so I'm not sure what that's all about I think it might have to do with the browser I think it only wants to use Safari and so I'll update the Safari tomorrow hopefully and uh, that's gonna change the game for you guys a lot really entertaining I got all the bootlickers in there already imported in right you know I licked my iPhone charger routine. I got all that imported in there. It's awesome. It's going to be so awesome. And so I got music imported in there. We got lots and lots of videos and the studies, you know, the models and all this, the videos of them imported in. And uh, there was no lagging, no nothing. It was really good audios. And like I say, once again, you know, if once I figure it out over the next few days, I'll have a virtual uh, green screen. And so... I'm not going to get moving stuff behind me, uh, uh, but I can have pictures and change the pictures behind me. That's, that was the intention of getting all of this stuff. And, um, you know, J Japan never had control. It doesn't have control right now. It's never going to have control. It's not even trying to get control. You know, at Fukushima, they had, or Chernobyl, they brought in 600, or conscripted 600,000 soldiers. They got medals for working on Chernobyl. One third the size, thirty percent meltdown. At Fukushima, three times the size, three one hundred percent meltdowns, and they they got the homeless who can't read or write. We're in a lot of trouble. See, 
You know what I mean? We're in a lot of trouble and no one wants to fess up to it. No one wants to do nothing about it. No one wants to put any pressure on the system to stop lawyering and start coming up with solutions. The solution to these folks is to come out and lie and equate the man-made radioactive materials with insignificant, normal, everyday, indigenous background radiation like bananas or that's in your clothing, that is homeostasis, that you off-gas, that is regulated in your body like a thermostat, like a cruise control on a car regulates the speed. Your potassium-40 in your body is regulated. You can't have any more in your body. And every friggin' one of them, for three years now, equates the radiation from the ionized man-made radioactive material as insignificant, billion-year-old, normal, harmless, one thousandth of a second lifespan, potassium-40, and deludes the truth, right? That's all he... The only thing that gets diluted is the truth. You can't dilute a radioactive material. Uh, it's not normal on this planet. You won't find it on the moon. You won't find it in the Milky Way element periodic tables. It's not supposed to be on this planet. We, we need to stop. No matter how much money you make and no matter how much money you're pouring into it, it ain't going to change anything, only make it a lot worse. The longer you're doing it, the worse it gets. You can't decondition a nuclear power plant. You got three square miles. Three square miles. There is enough on this planet, or Americans alone, radioactive waste from the chain reaction to cover West Virginia, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Hawaii, New Hampshire, Delaware, and Vermont in one inch of radioactive material. You would cook. It would cook you. It would fry you like a chicken in the fucking oven. And they got nowhere to put it. They don't know what to do with it. It's extraordinary toxics and it's killing everything on this planet. And they're not trying to do anything with it. Their solution is put it in a hole and everybody runs away at whip and no Maggie call. Carol's bad. And it, like once again, you know, it's untenable. We can't keep another second of doing this. It's irrelevant. It's stupid. It's 100% of the issue on the planet. Firing 2.5 million rounds a month into poor people's countries. You sick and demented, twisted, gross, disgusting mon monsters. You, you know, only a monster could do something like that. You fired in other people's country, but you say they're going to get one and throw it in your country. You throw 2.5 million rounds of this stuff in their country every month. Dirty bombs. Prince Harry's up there flying around shooting dirty bombs. And of those helicopters, the A-10 Warthog, your rah, 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 shoots a ton and a half of uranium-238. A minute. That's 71 Nagasaki bombs, the animosity equivalent of radiation. How the fuck can you keep doing this? How come you can't... You know, I know, I understand why. It's because of all, all the lies you get from all the... The professionals, all the experts, they're all, all lawyers. You can't trust a single friggin' soul out there. It's heartbreaking. It truly is. It's disturbing. And, you know, I just, I'll end it on this, that right now I'm going through Harvard and Yale and Oxford and Berkeley and Stanford and, uh, you know, uh, a whole bunch of these the best institutions on the planet. And I'm going through March 2011. And I'm reading it. And I'm getting their one hour lectures and presentations about Fukushima. And the audience is full of community members that are worried sick. That went to these institutions. And they sat there on the stage and lied to them. It's unimaginable. They had all the guests. And they were, that's the only time I've ever seen in all the interviews out there, nuclear experts was that first couple of weeks. You won't see them after, they went into hibernation because the sunlight will just destroy them. They're ashamed of themselves. Hopefully they went and hung themselves. I'll help them if they like. We can do it over line. I got no problem with that at all. If you were, if you were one of these apologists from the nuclear industry and you want to go kill yourself and you contact me and set up a webcam, I'll watch you. I won't interfere. I'll tell everybody you were sorry.
you know, that's that's the reality of it. That's going on out there. There there is some remorse out there, but it's not good enough. There's so many people dependent every day on the nuclear uh, welfare machine for a paycheck, and they're so stupid. They're so fucking stupid. They're so insignificant, and they won't give it up for anything. It's an easy. It's the only thing they can do. Is something stupid like that. They couldn't make a living doing anything else. They're the inbreeds that have infiltrated every aspect of our governments and industry and they feel like they're entitled and they want it all and they will fucking murder everything around them to keep their job. They'll murder their own children, their own friends, their own families, their own loved ones, their own spouses, their own nephews and aunts and uncles and cousins so they can get a fucking check. It's shocking. Okay, well, I'll come in and say goodnight to everybody. Don't worry about me, folks. I've been at it all day. I'm just I'm really sore because I haven't stopped. Uh, but I'm determined to get it. And when I get it, you'll see a huge freaking smile on my face because I'm able to bring you a really cool presentation that you know, I was hoping to get tonight, but I wasn't sure I was going to get it. So, Hi, Janet. We destroy what you save. Cats alive. Everybody, we'll catch you folks tomorrow night. Half an hour show tonight. I'm down for the count. Yeah, the air anthers. I'm just busted up today. It was a good day though. I got everything done except for connecting to YouTube. So that's all I got left to do now is make that connection and I can do the stream. And so we're just probably tomorrow night or the night after we'll have it. Yeah, I hear you, Mickey. You don't stop. Like all you folks, you know, you show up at all these streams and you say, Dan, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I really don't, right? Uh, you know, bless you for what you're doing. I, I hear you, where you're coming from. But I can't imagine, you know, so many of you people out there have caught almost all of these streams. If not all of these streams. Absolutely amazing. And, you know, that's the reality of it. In it, is that we, that's the only way we're going to get it done is we all band together and pull together and keep pushing back. And that's what we're doing. And there, and there is no switching us off. We're not going away. See, I got a rough haircut there tonight. Uh, okay, good night, everybody. Round the flash. Fukushima and Revelations. Hi, Patrick. Later side of genocide checks and balances. Strontium, Mike, Cats, Lloyd, Mervin. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm definitely a bit run down. New room magic. I get so smile when I see Nubu Magic. I know he's busy. He's doing his own thing. And he showed up. He shows up every once in a while, and it's always fun for us. And we're happy to see him as much as you can find. You'll find links below to him. He's a blogger like myself, and he's been at it much longer on this particular subject. Um, and he's got a really big collection there, and a great knowledge, you know. And he's just not. He's not a screaming demon like me. We're working on him, but. It's not necessary, right? You don't need. That's why we need all. That's why there's all those links below. So there's all these different personalities, all these different people, all these different perspectives. And you know, I, I'm not going to say I agree with everything down below, but uh, it's important that you have both sides of that story, so you can make up your own mind. Right? I can help you understand how the whole system works, but it's up to you ultimately to make up your own mind, to look yourself and to come to your own conclusions. I can help guide you on how the lies are told and then you can verify it and then you can all, you know, by doing that you will work out on your own. Yeah, well, I actually feel better because I really, I didn't even think I was going to get the Adobe because I had that, that system there so plugged up with all that other stuff and I was trying to get it all to shut down in like 12 14 minutes get online and uh you know hopefully tomorrow will be online i got everything loaded up in it that i wanted and so tomorrow morning probably i'm going to show up uh with another test stream and 
So I'll be jumping on that over and over and over until I get live. And because that's all I got to do now. And I'll call them up at their 1-800 number if I got to. And get this last part in. Because I got everything else done. Because I've used this for a few months already. So I already know the system. And I paid a few hundred bucks to open up all the other features. And um, so everything makes sense to me. But I just don't know why I can't plug into my YouTube. Okay, folks. We'll catch you tomorrow night. There you go, we rambled on for 40 minutes. That was pretty good. Now what we wanted. Like I said, can't win them all. Once I get that other system working, though, that's going to energize the crap out of me because there's so much graphics now. I got all the graphics I want live streaming. I even got a... Um, it even got a desktop uh, presenter. So I can flip from the live stream, take you right over to my desktop, Say open up a browser, open up a web page, and I can stream that straight out to you guys. And at the same time have the, the green screen behind me, if I can figure it out. <laughs> I'll figure it out. It's just, like you say, it's hard when you can't get that last piece and you put so much time into it. It's okay. That's, it'll be better tomorrow night for sure, see? I'll catch you folks tomorrow night.